I'm your host, Teddy McDook. That's right. I'm joined as always by Dr. Roshi, Dr. Kesmoji. Coming to you live, Facebook, Brinks. And John, Bruce Springsteen, Sheeran. Baby, we were born to run. That's right. And look, we are not live on YouTube right now. No. No. And that, supposedly, there is a YouTube outage. What? I don't know, some conspiracy theorists may be saying that it is, you know, a way to get you watching Brinks.TV. Yeah. What you can do, you can go to Brinks.TV and watch this. Live. You can watch it live there right now, and it will be uploaded to the YouTube later, and also be on the YouTube Believe channel, if you're watching there. We are D&H Sports on YouTube. And it's also broadcast live on Facebook, live a stream. Just the flowing, you know, uh, kind of knowledge. Frothy. Of commentary. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, Brinks.tv, it, it's great. The work they're doing is great. And they have new podcasts all the time. But what about and the Wino app, Daddy? What about the Wino app? Yeah, well, well uh, wino.app slash Sports. You can go there for $3 a month. You can have a direct line to me and Hoji and John. Yeah. And we will basically uh, tell you how to think, how to essentially navigate life, uh, what yeah. to... Yeah, Vegan recipes, to, horoscopes, right. whatever you're looking for. All that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But on Brinks.tv, you will find this show. You will find the Ray Lewis show. You'll find the Inside the Shield with, with Pro Football Moms show. And you will find a lot of other fun shows. And recently, I think Courtney has actually gotten some big time guests including the great Clint Eastwood, who has a new Ooh. podcast. It's wow. called, hold on, let me just say, it's called, I've Got Your Diversity Right Here. Oh and my gosh. That, that is, yeah, it's Clint Eastwood's new podcast, so it's fascinating. That sounds very Clint Eastwood. Sounds very untrue, but sounds a lot like Clint Eastwood. I remember He's when he talked like to the a chair. least diverse person in the world, yeah. Clint Eastwood. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Great director, though. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He a great old Leatherface. Yeah. We call him old Leatherface, yeah. Yes. And all right, guys, let's get right to the news. Well, first, let's, let's, let's well, we want, because is, there's not is, a lot of news. Yeah. yeah, there is no news. So what we're going to do is there's no news. we're going no. to, we're let's going to review some of, news. well, we want to encourage you to leave comments on the show. And so we're going to review the best comments each week under a segment called Who Say? And this is for the, obviously for the off season. And uh, look, we had some comments on our YouTube show and in the chat box. And uh, Courtney, can you pull those up, please? So, yeah. So, look, this one, I, I like this one. Uh, I don't blame Deshaun Watson. We were talking last week about Deshaun Watson's impact, his contract, the impact on the negotiations with Joe Burrow. And says, I don't blame him. Rather, I blame the Federal Reserve and unlimited Keynesian, Keynesian economics. And uh, also, this is very much in keeping with our humor by Rick S. I remember Nick Eubanks when he hosted the New Livet game. And we had some comments in the chat box, Courtney. As well. The next slide. Yeah. So, look. Let's see, look. The, the people were upset there was no hojoscope, obviously. And someone asked about Alec Pierce. Oh, I like this one. Daddy looks very sharp. That's true. I mean, none always, of you have ever observed sharp. the dress code for this job. Well, look I've at this, you. dude. He had four comments. I feel like he was just trying to get your attention, so he just lied. Well, yeah. first of all, he's a super user. He pays for those comments. So that means they're correct. But also, you look, can't at, all buy the look truth. at all that value. Yeah. But, but... He, he talked about Alec Pierce, and we're going to talk about Alec Pierce later in the show. And then, by the way, this show, every time we do a show, we have some blogs on cincyjungle.com. John has some, some blogs, but, you know, if you, yeah, this is my blog. If you want the, the real breakdown, the kind of the X's and O's, you can read my blogs. And uh, let's look at some of the comments there. A little bit, uh, the next slide, Courtney. 
and you can see that there we go a lot of people were were, were really vocal about uh, john with the the puppets and they say i i, I find it distracting see okay can, can i can i can i just say something about that but hold on this man is a puppet minister and he says he's not anti-puppet which that i mean that makes it more yeah it makes it makes it a little bit uh scarier yeah yeah i i got something to say about that and and, and it's that i really get annoyed when they call john a puppet and and i yeah. don't know what they mean by that it's i guess been, they were referring yeah, to john and bridget and and it's because you know daddy and i are the stars i get it right and you guys are kind of well, voice voicing the, i don't know you know the news and you're puppeting what's in the news and you're not the creatives yeah. of the show the way i am i, I, yeah. I john i am offended for you i am a, look, when they call you a puppet i get offended for you yeah look i could put a stop to this delusion right now but i feel like it might hurt your feelings if you yeah. know let's just move on but i feel like saying that you ran run a puppet ministry so that right. de um dequalifies you from being anti-puppet it's kind of like yeah. saying you have black friends so i'm not racist so I'm not really sure I buy the validity of that yeah. justification there. Well, I, I, I guess what he's trying to say, yeah, I mean, th that's true. I guess he's trying to say, I, 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 I'm legitimately, I have a right to hate you, right? And it's not because you're- He feels entitled because, because of puppet. whatever, yeah. yeah, that he has going yeah. on. I well, can you pull that fair. comment up again one more time, Courtney? Because there's is, there is some other comments that I want to address, but Okay, so we're pulling up the comment, and there you go. So look, and it says, even John gets annoyed, which is ridiculous. John never looks annoyed. He never looks yeah. distracted or annoyed. And says, I'd rather just listen to Anthony and John. Anthony hasn't hosted the yeah. show for years. That was before John was here. Anthony Pacelli has been gone for a very yeah. long time. I see we bring him back. Anthony. He was, a, he was a cute guy. Yeah. Let's no, get Anthony actually, as a comment. Yeah. yeah. But look at the bottom commentary. Just hey, he gets. They're saying John gets annoyed because he's he just has to puppet everything that's in the news, and he has to puppet yeah. this and puppet that. And I agree. I see how John might get annoyed by that. But John is here for the facts. Yeah. You can't have a bunch of people spewing opinions. One guy's got to be the fact. John got to be the puppet. Well, look at this bottom comment here. Carson, Carson Palmer's Palmer. wife dreams about Joe Burrow every night. Okay. That is ridiculous. More like okay, Palmer. like who because would I think ever that marry I, Carson Palmer? You know what I mean? That is that well, is outrageous. No one and I mean, considering Carson the Palmer, age yeah. difference, it might actually be illegal in some states. Yeah. Do, do you, do you Joe Burrow is just a little boy. Like like which Carson Palmer? Who, who, yeah, who was getting mad at at uh, trash being thrown on their driveway? If it wasn't Palmer, was oh, it? Oh, was he getting other? mad about that? No, that was her. Oh, that oh, she was his, his real wife. That is real and not. Daddy, real. were you throwing the trash? You know, I have never known anyone to to dislike Carson Palmer as much as Daddy. And and there's no reason or logic behind it. He has this thing against Carson Palmer. I would never throw trash on someone's yard when it's it's very cheap to hire someone to do that. Actually, but look, let us go to the actual news, John. The Bengals hosted a guy you know a lot about, Alec Pierce. And let me say, uh, just in case anybody's wondering why. The subtopics are not as, as witty or as fun as they usually are. Biting, Anik they're not has, as biting. Yeah, Anik has finals this week. So he's, he's a very busy man. And so he kind he's of- He's like seven years minimum. old. If yeah, that. Very smart kid. Is he already but so, look. Yeah. So look, John, Alec yeah. Pierce. Alec Pierce. Who is, now let's okay. imagine, now John, John, I okay. want you to imagine there's someone out there who has no idea who Alec Pierce is. He's hearing the name. Right. This just imagine, pretend. first time on the show. He's never heard of Alec Pierce. Who is he? Because right. so, that's not us. That's not yeah. us. Because no. we get paid no, no, for no. this. But, but some I'm of saying our viewers. viewers. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you want me to imagine talking imagine. to someone who's never so, yeah. heard of Alec Pierce. Never. And or I hate when people play. call you a puppet, John, but, right. but I want to know your opinion. Okay, Puppet so it to us. Let me just get in the right mind frame here. Okay, Alec Pierce is a six foot three, two hundred and twelve pound wide receiver from wow. the University of Cincinnati. He's been in like a three year, four year contributor for that team. He really took off in twenty twenty as this tall, lanky yet physical 
big boy. vertical threat. Like he, his career average yards per reception is like 17 yards in an offense that really didn't take off until like last year. And he's been consistently productive in the offense. He emerged as the number one option in that offense. And just the physicality combined with his speed and his explosion for that size, it's a rare trait. And some of those guys, some of those receivers, they end up going pretty early in the draft. And that might surprise some people when Alec Pierce maybe becomes like a top 60 pick. He gets picked in the first two rounds. And I think people were really surprised at how well he tested at the combine. He ran like almost, I think he nearly ran a four four flat 40 yard dash at that size and he jumped out of the building. I think there's a there's still a hole from the roof at Lucas Oil wow. Stadium for when he jumped at the vertical jump. So the guy is really, really athletic and he was productive at a very good program. So yeah, I could definitely see him being picked really high, but when it comes to the Bengals, their receiver, you're not really expecting that because of the receivers that they have, but I yeah, think not the not just, the first not the second round pick. They wouldn't use that on them, right? Probably not, but that might be what it takes to draft him. So I think the Bengals were interested in meeting with him. You know, he I think he's from he may, he may not be from Cincinnati, but he's lived here for the past four years, so he's familiar with the area. I think they wanted to get another visit with him, see him run up close because. In all, in all likelihood, they're not going to draft him, but it doesn't hurt to just you know see what he is as a person because in the yeah. in the unlikely case that he does fall in the draft, I could definitely see them being interested in him. I mean, John, look, look it is like a what? A, a probably a ten minute bus ride for those scouts to go check him out, and you can you can ride the bus for like a dollar or something now. So when you think about it, the investment. Right. If you think it's about it. going yeah. and scouting people all over the country, or just going right next door, you know. Yeah, but seriously, it, it, it I I like I love the and I'm, I'm I know this is a show for kids, so I'm not going to use the word I was going to use the gutsiness. I was going to use a different body part, but the gutsiness of the Bengals to think about getting a receiver when they already are so stacked on receiver. Because you Johnson. know what it is? It's like I got weapons. I'm going to put more weapons on. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, not, just, John? Well, John, with all the big salaries coming up, right, you have to, and I hate to say this because he is such a competitor, such a gritty guy who, one of those guys who, when the team was really pretty sad, you know, you look back at 2019 and when he broke his leg off and he dragged it back to the line of scrimmage oh, poor in guy. a game that people wanted to lose against the Dolphins, you look at Tyler Boyd and you have to think they can't continue to pay him very long. Right, John. I mean, I mean, if they're gonna, I mean, if it's if they're gonna try to keep T. Higgins in addition to Jamar Chase, we're not gonna have Tyler Boyd until the end of his career. Not with the so, numbers he's putting up, no way. No, Boyd is well, he's to putting up those pastures. numbers because he's because he's playing across from two Pro Bowlers. I mean, who would be able to put up numbers with those two guys, John? Yeah, yeah, he's gone. But, I mean, he's very look. Alec Pierce is a very yeah. He's gone. You can let me speak. Yeah, he's gone after yeah. 2023 when his contract expires. Tyler Boyd is. Yeah, There's exactly. just no feasible way that they can pay all three of those guys. But Alec Pierce is not a Tyler Boyd replacement by any means. No. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So this is what just... Is what, is what, is what is he? What is he? He's an outsider. Why not? He's a, Why not? He, he would be... Pretend I don't know. John, John pretend I know nothing about football. Why I'm already not? pretending that. Like, I'm already in yeah. that mindset. He is a T. Higgins replacement, if anything, because he's okay. that same body type. So big, that is a scary... Big that boy, is scary. You. What if they want to replace both Higgins and Boyd? That no, they're not going to replace both of them. Not going to replace both of them. You see what he's saying? He's saying you're going to have two Higgins, you're going to have two T's, and a, and a, a, you're going to have a chase. Is is what he's no, really saying? No, you you're need. Not, no, they're to not going to do that. You don't John, need a slot they're, guy. They're they're, they're reenvisioning John, the offense. John, John, Daddy, John doesn't the think the they're NFL definitely is not, going to keep Higgins. The, the NFL doesn't have. I mean, contrary to popular belief, they don't have dictators running the NFL. Like there is a limited amount yeah. of monetary supply here you can't pay everyone like it's more no. of a so it's more of a I know. socialistic I'm society that, than people realize there we go i'm saying there's a chance there they go. lose higgins too is what you're well, saying yeah, like if uh, they that's get what i'm saying here. like that has yeah. to be yeah that has to be recognized as something that's possible a and possibility? Like, yeah, yeah that's what i was saying and, okay and, so and, and the thing is a pierce draft pick is very progressive in the sense that you're already planning for that but there also has to be yeah. a legitimate plan to get him on the field and you're talking about a second round pick who might not see like starting snaps for the first two years of his career and that might not be the smartest thing to do well it would drive his value down make it easier to sign him to the second contract but look at him already thinking 
Okay, yeah. John, let us move on. He sees, to he sees dollars and cents. Okay, let's go. Right. Because, John, look, the, the Bengals have worked out a lot of cornerbacks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And one guy, the, probably the top corner, the guy that would go in the first round is Andrew Booth. Booth. Who, yes. You think he's, he has some injury concerns that we don't know about? Back in but high I school. Want you, I want to talk about started, him. Yeah, yeah back in high school, started dealing with tendonitis like at the ripe age of 18 and then he missed a couple of games in his first two years and then he had and, and at which the, and which spot of the body was that the tendonitis um it's a good question i'll have to look that up okay then that doesn't after his sophomore year he had surgery on his like right uh p p platella i want to say so around his knee and that was back in 2020 and ever since then he's been healthy but then he dealt with like a quad injury, like a groin injury, and he had surgery for a sports hernia just like a couple months ago. And that's impacted how much that he could do this off season before the draft. So there is a laundry list of medical issues on top of his profile. And while he's been able to play with all of those ailments and whatnot, he hasn't missed a ton of time. That is something that teams could notice and say okay he's been able to stay healthy now but what is his long-term health outlook yeah. looking like if you've dealt with all of these things and these issues at 19 20 21 years old are you going to be able to hold up for the next five years for the next 10 years and that has led in the past to some really good players dropping in the draft and i think that's not completely out of the equation for a guy like booth who should be going in the first round if he was completely healthy but like last year tevin jenkins was an offensive tackle from oklahoma state and he had several injuries uh, attached to his resume and that ended up dropping him out of the first round entirely he ended up going like the middle of the second round but he deserved to be drafted a lot higher and he barely stayed healthy in his rookie year i'm saying like that is possible for booth and that's something to consider for the Bengals who maybe need a cornerback who's able to play right now and i think he will be able to play it's just that those injury that that, that history it, it, yeah. it's definitely questionable yeah because what well, we're really talking about, about jabba, 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 jabba. what we're talking about really is someone being injury prone and we remember we remember the Tyler Eifert days when you kept hoping for him to get better and he kept getting worse it was like a Mr. Magoo scenario he's walking through you know gla glass he's, he's stepping on rakes he's you know he's slipping on banana peels and we and, and, and the thing is you can't plan an offense around someone who keeps getting injured and so let's scratch Andrew Booth off the list. I think we can all agree on that. John, let's talk about him as a player. Because player. I looked at okay, I looked about at about, you know, eight to nine seconds of his highlights. It reminded me a little bit of William Jackson. You know, kind of the long arms using his arms. Which one? The first, second or the third one? The third William Jackson. The third one, okay. Yeah. John, what what what, what kind of cornerback is he? How fast is he? Is he like the, uh, is he a shutdown corner? Is he a physical corner? What is he? So I don't really see that much William Jackson in him. Um, I honestly think that what, what William lacked, at least at the professional level, was the ability to track deep balls and to time um, just getting his hands up to defend some of these passes. And I think that's something that Booth brings in spades. I think his footwork and his feet in general are very good. They're reminiscent of a Chidabe Awuzie, the guy who can mirror guys in man coverage and can get physical and a very willing run defender and a guy who wants to take on blocks and attack some of those screens and those uh, swing passes. And that's something that William Jackson was not very good at. So I think there's a lot to like about Andrew Booth when he's on the field and just his overall athletic skill set. Maybe he, he may not be like the fastest guy on you know running the 40-yard dash, but I think just in general, his physicality matched with his footwork and his back pedal when he's dropping back into coverage I think it's among the best in this class and that combined with the medical questions is why I think he's in the conversation for being a late first round pick and if you have confidence in his medical I know I don't think there's a better cornerback selection to be taken with the 31st pick in this draft okay. well you know what's well, funny is that that what you describe reminded me a lot of Leon Hall yeah and he had the injuries too. I mean, he ended. Leon up Hall had two two Achilles injuries, and I think he recovered from both of them yeah. perfectly fine. Well, but at some yeah. point, you just break down. 
Yeah, it's a human well, body. He was, Leon Hall, Leon Hall was an exceptional athlete. Yeah, I mean, he but was, so he so was, is so is that's so the is thing. Andrew Booth, though. So is Andrew Booth. That's what I'm saying. I don't I don't think he's a Leon Hall. No, but his injuries weren't as serious as as Leon's. But uh, yeah, okay. Speaking of Hall, John, hmm. we have another person the Bengals might target in the first round. Again, I apologize Logan. for the not so spicy subtopic, but good luck on your finals, Anik Logan Hall. Right, so Logan Hall, John, is a guy who who plays defense. Go ahead. So if you were to stack three hoagies on top of one another, you would get wow. Logan Hall. Three hoagies or three hoagies? Hoagies. Okay. You you need a lot more hoagies to stack on top. Oh yeah. This dude is six. Yeah. He's six, been eating okay. a lot of hoagies. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he has. Maybe he. Needs well, you know, a little but bit back more. when hoagie was cool, he used. To, he when used to cool. eat three hoagies a day back when hoagie, hoagie back, was cool. back when I was yeah. a meat eater in my in my days of ignorance. Yeah, but you don't right. gain height when I mean he. You gain, you know. Well, we thought we thought height. that was going to be. Yeah, we were hoping, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so six Logan foot Hall six, two hundred. He doesn't need pounds. any more vertical height. He may need a little bit more bulk because he's only two hundred eighty pounds and he's been playing a lot of defensive tackle in his time at Houston, but he was really productive in that role. I think the last two years, his PFF pass rushing grade has been above 80s. Um, like his pass rush win rate has been above 20%. It's among what, some of the best amongst interior pass rushers. So if you're talking about a defensive tackle whose you know, primary specialty is just getting into the backfield as a, a penetrator from that three technique spot, that's exactly what the Bengals need. I think Logan Hall fits the bill really well. And for being 6'6", and playing a lot of defensive tackle, he is, his pad level is rarely an issue. He gets under guys, and he's really good with the bull rush. That's mainly how he wins, which is surprising considering his build. But he plays really low for his size, which indicates to me that he can survive a defensive tackle at the next level. And the more inside that he played at Houston over his four-year career, the better he got as a run defender. So I think that bodes well as well for keeping him inside. But the Bengals in general just need someone to back up B.J. Hill at three technique and someone to play over the tackle when they go into their five defensive line sets. And I think Logan Hall is the ideal person for that. It's just a matter of where you take him because he might be considered a reach if you were to take him in the late first round, but he might not make it to their second round pick. So in a scenario where the Bengals potentially trade out of the first round into like the 40s or the late 30s, I think Logan Hall is an ideal target in that range. I think the value fits perfectly there as a guy who's just can inject a pass rushing presence in, inside because they don't have a lot of bodies who can do that right now. Well, yeah. speaking about reach, I mean, his arms are not even 33 inches. Oh, boy. What are we going to do about that, John? He's got that's little it. baby, little baby crocodile arms. But that works to his advantage because he, John said he likes to get under their, what do you say, under, in, under their pads. And, so and, how do you feel no, about no, this not literally. Hoji? How do you feel oh, about you that? You know, I feel pretty good, but not great. Maybe so against it. At the combine, his arms measured in at 32 and three quarters. So he was a quarter of an inch away from 33 yep. inch arms. And then Big at his arms. pro day, he measured in with 33 inch arms. So oh. who are we to believe here? The school or the NFL? It's going to be 34 inches by the time I he's drafted. Right. The I like maybe he's maybe he's growing at this point. So so here's the question though: Do we what kind of defense do the Bengals usually play? It's not a three four, is it? Well, I, I think at, at its base, it's almost evolved into a three four. That's like what we say the five defensive lines or the five defensive linemen sets. That's three defensive tackles. You have two guys on the edge, and then you have two linebackers behind them. But when you know, they need a stop against the pass on third down. They'll go four defensive linemen, two linebackers, and three cornerbacks. That's your base nickel, if you will. So it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, people don't like the term multiple, but I think it really fits that for what the Bengals do. Like they have it's a like lot the of multiverse. Yeah. yeah. But, but they, say, mm -hmm. they say on the website that this guy, Logan Hall, is more suited for a 3-4. So, right, because so he has experience playing multiple gaps at the same time, which is what you see in a 3-4. If you line up right on the nose of a guard or the nose of a tackle, you're responsible for both gaps on either side of you. And that's that's a, a player, that's a role that the Bengals have had in the past. Like B.J. Hill played that role last year when he was backing up Larry, Ogun, or Larry Ogunjobi. Now B.J. Hill's going to play Larry Ogunjobi's role more, and they need someone to play... B.J. Hill's role when they when they are in their three four sets. So Logan Hall, I think, can do that as well as back up uh, B.J. Hill as a one gap pass rusher. So I think he can play multiple hats. Yeah, 
Very nice. Okay. Do you see it? Do you see the game John. of tennis that John and I are playing back and forth? Two great minds. Yeah. Why? How could someone call you a puppet? Anybody calls him a puppet, I'm gonna. They, they got the answer to me. Yeah. Well, we don't. I don't. You, you two didn't notice. I noticed because I care. But uh, we don't have HR in the room. Yeah. And uh, and I feel like we didn't really take advantage of that. It was a very mellow show. We could have said a lot more controversial things, got it out of our system. But at any rate, so we don't have our normal daddy who cares. And uh, John is actually going to talk about something that's very sad. The passing of Dwayne Haskins, yeah. a 24-year-old young man with an infectious smile is what you read everywhere and you can see it in the photos. Very yeah. loving man, generous man. Anybody who played with him and knew him was, was touched by his humanity. And so we're gonna let John talk a little bit more about that. Dwayne Haskins, I believe, came from the New Jersey, New York area and he visited Ohio State when he was like seven years old and he in, a, in an Ohio State jersey, again, as like a like a second grader, he said, I like it here. I want to go to college here. And a lot of, you know, kids, seven, eight years old, they have dreams, right? They have ambitions and aspirations. Not every one of them meets it. Dwayne, has, Dwayne Haskins not only accomplished his dream, he added more on top of it. And for a, a program in a school that doesn't really produce a lot of great quarterbacks, Dwayne Haskins became a first-round pick after competing to win that starting job, I believe in like 2018. And he was like a sophomore, redshirt sophomore or, or true junior, he was like 20 years old at the time. And he won that job over a guy named Joe Burrow. And Joe Burrow's whole story arc kind of started from there. But with, with Haskins, he threw for like 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns in that Ohio State offense. I think he won the Rose Bowl as well. and. He did it all, like Daddy O said, with with this infectious personality and smile, and everything about him made him a first round pick at the quarterback position. And unfortunately, he went to a terrible franchise in Washington that never really gave him a true chance to develop and thrive. Washington let him, let him go, and he was available for any team to acquire at like 22, 23 years old, and he ended up with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he was doing good things developing under Mike Tomlin with that quarterback room and already just making these great relationships with the Steelers, making himself known in the community, making a difference with different you know, charitable groups and whatnot, and just making his name known and making sure that people knew that he was there to help and he was there to stay and he was there to make a difference. And he was just 23, 24 years old. You know, his, his career arc had taken this crazy left turn and he was making the absolute most of it and just, you know, trying to make something out of himself. He already made so much out of himself. He already made it past where I think a lot of people expected him to go. And he, he, he became a first round pick at quarterback out of Ohio State. That's already unheard of enough. And, to, you know, to carve out a role in the NFL was just the cherry on top of it. But he was working out with some of his teammates in. Miami, Florida, and he was driving on the highway. I believe he ran out of gas and got out of his car, and he was struck by a vehicle on the highway, and he passed away uh, just a couple weeks before he turned 25 years old. And, I mean, anytime anyone dies, passes away at that age with just so much to offer to the world and already to make such a difference in the world and your community, wherever you go, it, it's just nothing short of absolutely tragic. I know he was a stealer. He was an Ohio State Buckeye, but he was a human being more than anything and a great one at that. And, you know, I wish his family nothing but the absolute best during what I can only imagine is yeah. the darkest time possible. Peace and love yeah. and namaste. I am so touched, John, by that beautiful tribute. I am verklempt. And I tell you what, I, with that, I cannot handle Daddy O switching from that to promotion, the capitalistic cold-hearted promotion. So I'm going to log off. I don't want to hear it. Hold you yeah. I, no, I, I obviously, I have some, oh, wow, he's gone. He's actually, he's actually gone. gone. Well, I think, uh, John, yeah, he's right. We can uh, try to, we don't have to talk about promotion in this show because you really put us in a different place. And uh, with that, we can end the show. I would say one final note, John, uh, Joe Burrow was out there uh, for the Reds 
he they needed his help and so he was pitching for the Reds today and he got a lot of lot of attention uh, you heard that crowd this is crazy I think they got them to sell out the team sell out the the uh, the stadium and uh, Jamar Chase and Zach Taylor they were all there so that was fun to see but yeah, I think I think Zach had some influence on how much uh, Joe was going to pitch, even so much that Zach was out there catching for him. So he pulled him after just one pitch yeah. to save his arm a little bit. Well, they're both tremendous athletes. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to, if they could actually play the game of baseball. But yeah, so that is all we have for the non-news. We're going to have some real news very soon, John. A couple of weeks, we're going to have the draft. That's going to be a lot of fun. We have a very special surprise for you that we can't announce yet about the draft. We're going to have some really fun activities for the draft. And uh, that is all we have for this show. For John Sheeran, I am Daddy MacDuke. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn on notifications, that little bell. I never knew what that was, John. That is to get notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Do that, and we'll see you next time. So long, sweetie. Bye.